You're on. Oh, you're on now, huh? Yeah, with that little red on there. Which one? The new shit mm -hmm. Which one's that? Gonna pause it for now. You're on. Okay. We'll put this right over here. She wants that seat, so I'm gonna give her that seat because I'm benevolent and kind. Not at all. That's good average. Why gotta focus? <clears throat> Right over here next to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. So what'd you have for dinner? Yeah, soup. Uh, soup. I, could, I just had a small bowl. They had lasagna for lunch. Wow. And their lasagna is delicious. Mm -hmm. cool. Just that. Uh, you know, Did Eric say he was coming? No. He didn't. Kelly wasn't home yet. So, they gave you some pretty good uh, OERs, huh? Well, this one from the engineer school. Uh, <clears throat> what happened is that <laughs> the colonel in charge of the school came down to, uh, to greet the group. And it was a motley crowd, you know. Uh, all the branches, one medical. That was me. And, uh, he said, uh, we'd normally have a, a, a formal formation for this orientation, but uh, it seems we don't have anybody that's uh, familiar with the procedure. And he said, our normal procedure is we, we select as the school, as the class company commander, the senior officer present. He said, that just happens to be you. He said, however, you know, you're, you're, you're not, he said, we don't know your background. Do you have any, know anything about close order drill? I said, well, what do you want me to do? You want me to form the group here? So I picked three guys out, made them the squad leaders, said we're going to designate three, three squads, call them to attention, fall in, and have them set themselves up by rank and put them through close order drill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, they were the ones that were goofing up. I mean, they, some of them, instead of from by the right flank, they didn't know what the hell I was talking about. At any rate, got all finished with it. And this one guy came to me and he says, you know, I was sure if we had a goddamn medic in charge of this class, he was going to run us off in the ditch. <laughs> That was a good course, too. How is it, Aaron? Mm-hmm. Good. Just 
tell Eric that. When we made so much of this, we did have him in mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's always like other services and branches within the service to give each other grief like that. I thought I met the doctor, just one of the doctors that I called back to active duty. Turns out that we have a retired uh, uh, medical officer. Never actually went on active duty in the branch of the services. But when the uh, Korean thing came along, they needed doctors. They called uh, anybody that anybody that had an MD. They just called them, and he said ten of them were sent to, uh, I guess it was Japan first. And he said they were all board specialists. They weren't what you would call family type practicing physician. Some of them hadn't even seen a needle for some in the last 20 years of their practice. And here they put them in, they were going to put them into Korea as battalion surgeons out on the front line. Mm, mm, mm. So he was at that time, he was a... They call it the MASH unit. <laughs> yeah. He was the, uh, the, uh, he was a pediatrician. And he said he can, he could just see himself out delivering babies on the front line, except there wouldn't be any babies. They'd be they'd be Koreans. I'd be mm -hmm. delivering. Mm -hmm. so, pediatrician or obstetrician? Would that would be obstetrician? Baby doctor is a pediatrician. Pediatrician. And uh, he is a. Mm -hmm. He's also a board certified uh, uh, orthopedic surgeon. Mm -hmm. uh, Special uses hips. So I told him, I said, you know, I got a, had a tour of active duty at the Presidio in San Francisco in the Surgeon General's office, Surgeon Sur Sur of the Sixth Army. And uh, he said, I went in there the first day. He said, the, the uh, surgeon's name was Hans Bachspies. Can you imagine the name any more German than that? Mm -mm. Then CO comes in with it, about four of the, these uh, cartons full of uh, the, the, uh, the 201s of all the surgeons in the 6th Army area. There about, must have been about 400 of them. Mm. And he said, we need 25 MDs for the 6th Army area. And he said, I want you to go through these. And he said, I want you to pick out, this was just before Vietnam, too. He said, I want you to set up a criteria for which officers you're going to call back and then come in and talk to me about it. So I made a quick review of the things and, you know, mixed in with them were uh, medical officers who had actually served during World War II put in maybe um, anywhere from six months to <coughs> two years. Mm -hmm. So I had to set my criteria that anybody that had prior service would be in the lowest category. And the highest number one would be anybody that got their commissions and got all their got got their MDs on a federal grant who have never never served. Mm -hmm. And so I set up the criteria put it in on his desk, and the next day he came in and he says, I like that. And he says, you know what's going to happen? He said, those people are going to come back here looking for me, and I'm going to send it for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and boy, he was right. I had one guy come in who was getting, just before he was getting his board certification, I forget the specialty, but it was a specialty that wouldn't be abused in Vietnam. He says, you can't do this to me. 
showed him the criteria approved by Colonel Buxby. He said, I want to talk to that man. And I said, well, okay, I'll put your name down here, but you want to review. No, I don't want to review it. I want to talk to the man. I said, you can't. Because what he's going to do is give it right back to me and ask me to go over it again with the criteria. And this guy said, well, I'll go to hire a third. <coughs> Fine, go right ahead. And he did. <coughs> General Wiedemeyer, and who was the, uh, the 6th Army commander, mm -hmm. Wiedemeyer called Box Space, Box Space called me in. He said, I've read the criteria that we decided on. General Wiedemeyer said, in this particular officer's case, put him right up very front and call him one of the first ones in the back. <laughs> Well, you didn't like his whining and the blaming, huh? I will say this, most of them admitted that they were MDs based on the fact that public health service or the Army or the Navy had actually put the money up there for them to get their degree. Hmm. So you selected folks so to get over there and be the mass units for That's right. Vietnam. gal that I talked to a deaconess, uh, sometimes the, the receptionist, sometimes works in their, their library, and she said, don't, don't throw any of the books away, mm -hmm. even if you think that they're absolutely useless, because what we do is we take them all, we screen them, we put some in our library, then we call other libraries mm -hmm. and see if they're interested in titles. And he said, when we get it down to the very bottom, we take them to a bookseller, a used bookseller, and they give us something like 10 cents or 20 cents for each copy. And he said, we put that in the library fund. So that's the first thing I want to do, is get them to take a look at all the books. Mm -hmm. Smart thing to do. Well, I kept those two for Pamela. And I told her, she's all excited, especially the anatomy one. Oh, I've got a real interesting one for anatomy. Yeah, well, she's all excited about that one, because that's what she's studying right now. She doesn't have the new Grey's Anatomy. This is the Grey's Anatomy. The, the, the special edition Grey's Anatomy. This one has a 
do when you look at the front page, it has a view of the, the human anatomy looking from the front. With the thumbs then up. Have, and then you have a series of overlays, transparent overlay, mm -hmm. all in color. You can overlay and it has the internal organs. You lay out another one on it shows you the relationship of organs to the, the body. Then you flip the page and it's looking at the, the body from the back. And another set of overlays. The eleven mm -hmm. systems. Mm -hmm. Integumentary system. Mm -hmm. We haven't had any earthquakes for first mm -hmm. yet. No, I've heard about a bunch of them, but they just aren't coming in, huh? They just appear where you don't expect them. And you think, oh, they're all gone. And then we get a big shaker. Pretty consistent, huh? Yep. Pretty scary. I said we haven't felt the big one yet, though. Mm -hmm. I said within the next year we're going to get a five point. Seven point. Could be five. They're, they, they estimate five, but could be seven. So. But. I just don't want to be in that apartment when it happens. <laughs> Three and four is bad enough. <laughs> it shakes. Yeah. It's so close to the epicenter. Which is downtown. <coughs> My God's like a university. Who did the plan? Well, that's only on one of them. There's community. like four Who different. Who did the plan on yeah. this community? Uh, so. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Frank, do you think that uh, people are getting less restrained in what they say and do, and more vulgar? Yes. Mm -hmm. I do. Especially the youth. The, uh, I think TV was beginning to reflect, too. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean the TV uh, shows, I mean, interviews. Of course, they can, they can chop it out so easily. But they don't. They can say whatever they want anymore, it seems like. Less restrained and more vulgar. Hmm. This is just symptomatic of too many people, huh? It's like colonies of mice or rats. Uh, I need a glass of wine. All you want is the white stuff. You don't want the red stuff? Okay. Uh, I forgot the white. No, sorry. Mm. Well, you got a phone, right, Frank? Here, let me no, call Eric. Right next to the TV there. See if he's going to make it or not. They're not answering. Hmm. They're on the way. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking it is. I hope so. Kelly has a 
cell phone. I'm having to stop and get a bottle of white wine on the way. <clears throat> you going for the red wine, huh? Me? Yeah. No. Just water. Water. I'm drinking the water. Good for you. You getting some red wine? I am. Would you like some more? I've got some ice in here, but it's not red. <laughs> Here, I'll pour it. You hold it. Lake effect snow. Mm, yeah, it's off of the area, Lake Erie. Buffalo, New York. You know, if the wind blows over the lake, picks up moisture, and turns to snow when it hits the... Mm -hmm. It's called lake effect snow. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I want. choose how you want it set up. And they've got standard roof lines. They're not the flat, you know, trailer type roof. They're standard roof lines. And you just have lots of options with them. You know. And they're real well built. Mm. Well, they do bolt them together. <coughs> I, I don't I don't know exactly how they 
what the process is for putting them together, but you can't tell. It's, I mean, it looks like it flows just like a normal house. So maybe they bolt them together or, or do the they standard, do you know, I don't know, and then cover them over with drywall in the. But they do all of that at whatever the on location. On site after they get the all you know, in It's place. built in the factory and then put together on site. And they just have all these little modules so what you have to on do trucks. Work. And they just uh, take them off the truck and put them in you know, the order. You have to figure out. You can have multi-stories, too. Yeah, you have to figure out what the footprint's going to be and then have the oh, foundation yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just yeah. And they can do multi levels with these modular ones. They don't put the roof on it until you decide what you're going to be handling. And you can put things like dormers in and whatever other things that you select. It's pretty cool. Hmm. And you can put a metal roof on. Charleston. And dormers. Frost freeze in Charleston. Ah, ah, ah. Did you see that on? I did see a little red right on the coast mm -hmm. of Charleston. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty unusual. It wasn't but last I did Christmas. Bring, I did bring all my clients in. It wasn't at all unusual last year. So they should be doing okay. Yeah. It might be a little dry by the time I get home. What course of the water in for you? Didn't ask her to. Oh. Well, you're only gone for seven days, maybe six, seven days. Yeah. Well, God left my plants for a week. Yeah, some of them will be, others will hurt a little bit. Okay. Won't be too bad. Did you turn your thermometer down, thermostat down a little bit? Uh, no, I haven't had my heat on this year yet. We could probably be a little chilled when we get home. It Let's never gets below about 70. 70's the lowest it's been. We had the heater on when I was there last year. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because it was cold. Yeah, well, mine hasn't dipped below about 70 this year, and I haven't had the heat on. Do you have your thermostat set to come on? No, I haven't turned it on. <laughs> but it, you, since you left, you have a cold snap there. It's 25. No. It's 25? That's what they just said on there. Holy cow. That's, That's cold. grossly That's, cold. It's like a, yeah. Well, Frost I'm morning. down to 65 miles. Freeze frost for yeah, They're fine down to 58. See, I got somebody living on one side and somebody <laughs> living on the other side and somebody living on top. And as long as they're heating their house, I get some heat that way. Yeah, I'm just going to say. Yeah. Only have windows on two ends. Makes it pretty easy. You have yeah, that bedroom window or bedroom door closed by the parking lot, right? No. Mm. Left it open. Mm. The one thing that here is, boy, I'm telling you, it just gets hotter than hell. Not in here, because if it starts getting hot in here, I can turn this off, but I open the windows up. You see, you had them take the air conditioner out. Oh, yeah. It was making noises with the water dripping on it. It was a pain in the butt. And the bottom, on, on either end of the, of the bottom of it, is a half inch gap. The cold air. 